Hello and welcome to WEEP instructional videos. My name is Stephanie and today we're going to be talking about a new feature in WEEP, Catchment Delineation. This feature is available in the WEEP version release 2018 and it's going to allow users to automatically delineate catchments in their WEEP models. So what does that mean? Well, we're familiar with our catchment nodes. So for example, here's a catchment node called North Fork. And this catchment is meant to represent the area of the North Fork American River. If we go into the data view and look in the data tree for information about the North Fork catchment, the first thing we need to know is the land use and the area. And what does that mean? Well, let's talk about what catchments are. So here's a picture of the Mississippi River Basin from America's Watershed Initiative. And what we see here is the entire area that contributes to the flow of the Mississippi River. So if it rains over here, that water is going to run off and eventually run through this point down here. Uh, same if it rains over here, it will all eventually end up at this point. Now you can imagine that if you had picked a different point, then this would look a little bit different. If I picked up here, for example, this lighter blue area wouldn't be included. This is a tributary that comes down later. These points are called pore points, and they can be used at the confluence of tributaries, which is what we see here. So this is a pore point. Looks like there's another one here and here where the tributaries are joining. But you can also have pore points be areas of accuracy in your model. So places that you want your model to be particularly accurate so you know you're counting the correct flow. Uh, for example, if I had a reservoir right here, maybe I would want to note the flow just from everything upstream of that point. So then this catchment would have a different shape because it would be calculated differently. Previously, when we were calculating catchment areas in WEEP, we would do that in GIS and we would figure out what's the area in the catchment. Maybe we'd look at elevation and land cover as well. And then we'd import the shape files into WEEP and we would enter that information in the data view. Now, with the automatic catchment delineation mode, you can do everything in WEEP. So this is very exciting. Let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to start by deleting this catchment. Delete. And I'm going to say that here I have a pore point. And remember, this is going to be a point that defines the area of the catchment. And that pore point is a gauge station on the North Fork American River. And what I'll do is I'm going to go to schematic in my weep area and select catchment delineation mode. And as soon as I do that, weep is going to download a little bit of information. So continue looking at this information as I move my mouse around my map. As I hover over different pixels, it's going to show me the elevation, the land cover, the flow direction, flow accumulation, and upstream drainage area for each pixel. And this is for 15 seconds detail. This actually means 15 arc seconds, which corresponds to 500 meter satellite data resolution. It's the larger of the two options for data resolution, so it will mean a shorter download time. We can actually change it. Now three seconds is more detailed. It represents about 90 meters satellite data resolution. We recommend using this for all of your models unless it's a very large area. Basins such as the Mississippi or the whole Amazon may be too large for your computer memory to process at three second resolution. But most basins shouldn't have a problem. For the moment I'm going to uncheck these details for creating elevation bands and land cover branches. And I'm just going to tell WEEP to calculate my drainage area for the pore point that I'm about to select, which is going to be my gauge. So I'm going to click right there. And WEEP is going to download information from HydroSheds. And now we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it North Fork. American, and that gives it the name of the basin, the name of the catchment, as well as the name of the river, North Fork American River. And I'll say finish. And WEEP is going to download this data. Because it has to download the data from the internet, you must be connected to the internet when you do this initial exercise to define your catchments. 
All right, so here I have my catchment delineated. And let's close out of the catchment delineation mode so we can look at this in a little more detail. And I'm going to zoom in on it. And what do we see here? Well, we see that WEEP has created three shapefiles, basins, catchments, and rivers. And the red over here shows the overall basin that we've defined with our pore point. Now notice that the pore point is not the gauge. The gauge is up here. The pore point is instead down here. That's actually to make it easier for you when you're first defining your basins. If you had to click exactly on the pore point you want, you might have a little trouble on a large map. So instead, we just had you click anywhere that you could within the basin, and then WEEP goes all the way downstream to this point. And what's significant about this point? Well, if we look at the area boundaries for our model, we can see that this point is exactly the end of our area boundary on the river that WEEP drew. So I'm going to close out of this. And so basically what WEEP has done is it looked in that area where we clicked. Again, we clicked on our gauge. And it said, for the water that's accumulated right here, where will that water flow based on the elevation information? And where will that water ultimately leave the model? So that's why the area boundary matters. That becomes the pore point. So then we ask the question, for this pore point, where does all of that water come from? And then it uses the elevation data again to build this basin shape. You can also build catchments in WEEP, and WEEP will ask you if you want to use the automatic catchment delineation. So if I wanted to build the catchment next to this, I can click catchment, drag it over here, release, and I do want to use catchment delineation mode, so I'll say yes and we will do that for me. And we can see that it draws the catchment for me. So we've delineated our catchment. And we'll go into the data view. We will ask us to choose which model to use for the hydrologic modeling for our catchment. And I'll just say the third one soil moisture method. And now when we look at the area, we can see that WEEP has calculated the area for us based on the drainage basin that has appeared. And then we'll return to our model. And the basin is the overall shapefile that's defined by the pore point. You can have multiple catchments inside a single basin. And WEEP has also drawn rivers. Now if I uncheck that shapefile, we'll notice that one of the rivers is actually a WEEP node that WEEP has created. This WEEP river is generated by the flow in the catchment that represents the entire watershed area. Now, what does that second river mean? This river comes from the calculations done with the elevation data. So each pixel in the river represents an area of high flow accumulation. Note that the gray river lines are not used for calculations, just to show you where the tributaries are in case you want to add new catchments, as we'll see later on, or to use the rivers to define the catchments, as we'll do right now. The gauge that we're looking for, if we zoom in a little bit more, we'll notice that it's not actually on either of these rivers. So when we're talking about flow accumulation, this gauge is on a place that the flow accumulation hasn't yet been recognized by WEEP. So how do we get WEEP to recognize that flow accumulation? I'm going to go back into my catchment delineation mode and under something called river detail. So scroll up. We see that right now we don't have very much river detail. We're towards the less side. And if I move it even further to the left, this second river disappears. So we've told WEEP that there's a threshold of flow accumulation below which we are not interested in seeing the rivers. Now, if I tell WEEP to have more river detail, then that threshold lowers, and we'll be able to see more tributaries to these rivers. That's too many, so let's have a little bit less again. And what I'm looking for is the main branch of the river that goes through my gauge. Perfect. So now I can see it. 
And what I'm going to do is tell Weep that instead of modeling the central river, to model that northern river as the river that we're concerned about in Weep. To do that, I shift over to the head flow of my river, and I hover over it with my mouse until these arrows appear. I click, hold my mouse, and drag upwards, and Weep tries to guess where I might be going until finally it populates the river on that North Fork American River. So that's perfect. And then I'm going to scroll back over to my pore point and do a similar thing, where I'm going to tell Weep to move my pore point up to the gauge station. So I hover my mouse over the pore point until the arrows appear, and then move it up to the gauge station. And when I adjust my pore point, the whole watershed adjusts accordingly. So now if I close out of my catchment delineation mode, we have just the shape of the North Fork American River and the watershed area that contributes to the flow in the pore point at the gauge station. In addition to this, all of the data in WEEP has updated so that the catchment here now, still called North Fork American, it's inflowing into the river at the bottom, but the area data that we'll find in that catchment is now representative of this smaller red area rather than what we saw before. So WEEP's updating in real time to make things easier for us. The end result is that we have a drainage area where all the water here flows into this point in our model. You probably will have to do some work calibrating the modeled flow, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. These watershed areas are very important as you structure your models, and now you can do that a lot more easily since you can change them dynamically in WEEP. We will continue working with this catchment in a second video which will explore using the catchment delineation mode to add elevation and land cover data, as well as to add different catchments within a single basin.